But next we're going to talk about what is called the graphical method for solving linear programs that have two variables. I'm going to show you a method for solving any LP linear program that has only two variables that we accomplish by basically drawing the picture and using our eyeballs to figure out where the solution has to be. Uh, the reason it only works with two variables is because we can draw things in two dimensions, right? If we could draw things in three dimensions, there would be a three-dimensional graphical method as well. So we're going to show you how to solve this linear program here. You want to maximize 5x1 plus 4x2 subject to these, uh, these four constraints here together with non-negativity. So I'm going to work through this example and you can see how this is done. Ordinarily, you're going to want to do this with graphing paper and a uh, ruler. And uh, I do not have either of those, so I'm going to freehand it. Uh, but I, I hopefully this is enough to um, convey this idea. When I use graph paper in this, uh, it tends to get kind of noisy on the camera anyway. So uh, this, in my view, is the most effective way of doing that. The first step in using the graphical method to solve a linear program is you draw your feasible region. So we're going to draw in these axes over here the shape that is uh, defined by these relationships here or these constraints. It's going to be a polygonal shape uh, because these are all linear equations as we'll as we'll see in a minute. They're linear inequalities, sorry, they're not linear equations. And so the way you do this is as follows. You take each one of these constraints one by one, and I'm going to label them for reasons you'll see in a minute. I'm going to call this Roman numeral 1, Roman numeral 2, Roman numeral 3, and Roman numeral 4. Uh, that'll be useful later for when we need to recover what the actual solution is. So let's just draw these one by one. What does this thing here look like? 6x1 plus 4x2 is less than or equal to 24. Let's draw that shape here. Uh, in the plane. So what does that look like and how do you draw that? What you do is the following. So I've got an inequality here and what I always do is pretend that inequality is an equal sign. Okay, pretend this is the line 6x1 plus 4x2 equals 24. And we draw that line, which I'm sure you know how to do. So let's do that now. What would be the x and y intercepts of that? The x-intercept would be if you set x2 to 0 and you'd have 6x1 equals 24, uh, therefore x1 is equal to 4. And so the, the x1 intercept of this first constraint is going to be at 1, 2, 3, 4, like that. I'll make a little notch with my pen. And then the y intercept, or the x2 intercept, as I'm calling it, would be 4x2 is equal to 24, which would be x2 is equal to 6. So we do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, like that. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this one up here. Okay, and then you would draw the line that uh, connects those two. And actually, this might work as a straight edge, so we'll try that. Okay, I'll clean this up later anyway. So that's, that's the line. This is 6x1 plus 4x2 equals 24. And now we've got an inequality here. And what that inequality means is that we're either on the left side of this line, we're either over here, or we're on the right-hand side over here. To determine which one of those you are, uh, I always like to use the following trick. I always like to pick a really obvious point that, uh, for a point that lies obviously on one side of this line or the other. The origin is a good one. And we just ask, does the origin satisfy this constraint? The origin, in fact, I'll tell you ahead of time, the origin actually satisfies all of these constraints. So the answer is always going to be yes. But the way this would work is I'd say, well, the origin is below this line. And indeed, the origin, uh, you'd get 0 plus 0 is less than or equal to 24. That is certainly true. And so what that means is that 6x1 plus 4x2 less than or equal to 24 is everything below this line. And I like to draw something like this. I like to just draw little um, sort of tick marks on the, on the side of the line that corresponds to that. And now I'll make a little Roman numeral 1 like that to say that line there and everything below it uh, corresponds to this first constraint. So I've drawn that. Uh, this is called a half space. So all the stuff that lies to the left of this line, uh, when you talk about that kind, of, that kind of constraint or that kind of shape, you call that a half space. Okay, so that's constraint number one. We'll do the same thing for constraint number two. Uh, again, we'll, take, we'll pretend that inequality here is an equal sign and we'll, we'll draw the appropriate line. And so the, the x1 intercept would be x1 equals 6. 
So we'd go out one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'll make a little mark there. And then the x2 intercept would be uh, 2 x2 equals 6, so x2 would be 3. So we go 1, 2, 3, like that. And now I'll mark that line as well. I'm going to do my best here, like that. And now I'll mark a little Roman numeral 2, so I don't forget that that is the uh, second constraint. And we'll ask the same question, am I, am I above this line or below it? Uh, and so again, we'd say, well, the origin lies below it. So let's just ask if, if 0 comma 0 satisfies this constraint. And it does. 0 is less than or equal to 6, which means, therefore, we must be below this line. So I'll mark my little tick marks like that. And now, so what can we say so far? This tends to work a lot better when I have an eraser, but I don't. So I'm just going to uh, draw some things to try to convey the idea and then clean it up later. What has to be true? I have to be both below this line, that's my first constraint, and I have to be below this line, which is my second constraint, which means I have to be below both of them, which means that my feasible region right now looks like everything that's below this part and then everything below this part. So you have kind of a pointy, a pointy, uh, a pointy region like that, that that extends off in, in these directions that way. Um, and if you refer to the lecture slides, you'll see I I, I do uh, um, I do uh, eliminate the this other lines here to to isolate that. Okay, so at this moment in time, we know that our feasible region is like everything that is below my two fingers, and we're going to make this region smaller by incorporating these other constraints. So we've done constraint one, constraint two, constraint three says minus x one plus x two is less than or equal to one. And so again, we'll, uh, we'll figure out the x and y intercepts of that thing. So we take that inequality, pretend it's an equal sign, and we say the, the, minus, or the, the x1 intercept would be minus x1 equals 1, which means x1 is minus 1. So we make a little notch there. And then the, uh, the y intercept, or the x2 intercept, is uh, x2 is equal to 1, which is this one here. So now we'll draw another constraint in by connecting those two like that. And I'll make a little note to myself that this is constraint number three. And we ask the same question, am I above this line or below it? And, and once again, uh, we, we could check the origin. We'll say, well, the origin is clearly below this line. And so is the origin, uh, does the origin satisfy this constraint? As I've, as I've said before, it turns, it's going to turn out that the origin satisfies all of these. And so, yes, the origin satisfies that constraint. Therefore, if you're less than or equal to 1, then you're below this line. So we mark this like that. And um, I'm about to clean this whole picture up after I do one more constraint, but um, I'll just isolate things again so you can see what we know so far. So I, I said before that we were uh, the feasible region was everything that was below my, my two fingers, or actually here, I'll, I'll line my two pens up like that. Before the feasible region was everything that was uh, under these two pins, and now um, in addition we have to be below this this chopstick here as well. So so now we're, our feasible region is everything that's uh, bounded by this piece right here. Uh, so just for fun, I'll go ahead and kind of fill that in so you can see. Um, when you're working this on your own, you're welcome. You can you don't need to do this business of intermediately looking at how these constraints intersect with each other. You can save that all for the end. I'm just doing it one by one so you can sort of get a handle on, on what we're doing. Uh, okay, and one more constraint here. So we've just done number three. I marked the three. And now we'll do the fourth constraint, which is an easy one. X2 is less than or equal to two. That just means the y coordinate is is less than or equal to two, like that. And so we just have to be below this line there. I uh, hope I can fill this in properly. Good, there. Alrighty. And we have to be less than or equal to 2, so I think we all can tell, yes, certainly that means you're below this line. Okay, and then in addition, we have non-negativity. The x's have to be greater than or equal to 0, which means you're only going to be in the positive quadrant over up here, and so you'd also have to be within this piece. Okay, so all in all, what we now know is that the feasible region for the problem, the feasible region for this whole thing, is, is this part here. I'll just fill it in with blue. It's all this stuff like that. 
do some cross hatching there so you can see it's everything here. And I've, I've made kind of a mess. Uh, it's good to do this with a pencil in general because you can erase things and, and, and make it neater. Uh, what I will do here instead is I've just got a, a cleaner version of, um, of this linear program written here or of this feasible region. Okay, so this picture here, this is exactly nothing more than this region here, but I've kind of zoomed in. And, and cleaned everything up so you can just concentrate on, on this region here like that. Okay, so we're, um, in fact, at this point, we're actually close to being done with, uh, with this problem. And what we do now is we write the objective value. Okay, or we, rather, we, we, we write the objective function and we use that to work out what the, where the solution is. And so how do we do that? So we've, we've covered the feasible region here. We've, we've addressed that. Uh, we have to lie inside this shape here. Uh, and this shape incidentally has how many corners? That's gonna be useful to us. It has one, two, three, four, five, six corners. Uh, and now we wanna maximize 5x1 plus 4x2. So how do we maximize this function on this shape here? What you do, if you, I do the same thing in the slides, you draw this vector five comma four. Okay, five x1 plus four x2, you draw that vector, and I'll do that now. So I'll do it uh, one, two, three, four, five. It's five to the right, and then one, two, three, four in the vertical. And again, I'm just freehanding this, but it looks like it's about, uh, about here. It looks like that's the end point. And, uh, and then you would draw that as a, uh, as a vector. Um, now, something I want to point out here, uh, I'm allowed to draw that vector anywhere I like. And what I mean by that is that I drew it, I drew the vector um, with its, with its uh, head at the origin and the tail at 5 comma 4. Uh, if I didn't have to do that, I could have drawn this arrow anywhere on the page I like as long as it has the same orientation, as long as it goes five units to the right and four units up. I could have drawn it up here, I could have drawn it down there. Uh, you don't have to draw it centered at the origin. I'm just doing that now um, because that's, uh, I think, easiest to understand, but you could have drawn it over here, you could do anything you like. Okay, so I've drawn that vector, and now what are we gonna do? Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're going to use the orientation of this vector to figure out where the optimal solution has to be. What we're going to do is we're going to look at this arrow, this vector, and we're going to look at the family of lines that are perpendicular to it. And we're just going to do that with our eyes. I'll say, yeah, this is about like this, this family of lines. Now, what is special or what is the relationship between the family of lines that are perpendicular to this vector and this function here? So let's take this line for example, okay? I'll take this, this line right here, which is uh, perpendicular to this vector. Um, what is true about this line? Well, what I can tell you is true, and the key feature here is that the objective function, 5x1 plus 4x2, 5x1 plus 4x2 is constant along this line. So this one, for example, I can tell you, uh, I'll make a little mark line down there. I don't wanna draw this line too much. I do in the slides, I'll just make a little note. Uh, this is the line uh, 5x2 plus 4, sorry, 5x1 plus 4x2 is equal to 5. And how did I know that so quick? Well, I knew that because I knew that 5x1 plus 4x2, as I said a moment ago, it has to be constant. And I knew it's 5 because I happen to be going through this point here, which is 1 comma 0. And so I just plug in 1 comma 0 here and I get 5. So this is 5x1 plus 4x2 is equal to 5. Now if I move to the right a little bit like that, this line would be, uh, I'll make another line there just for fun, 5x1 plus 4x2 is equal to 10. Okay, so all these lines here, as I, as I, if I, if I take a line that's perpendicular to this vector, uh, the objective value 5x1 plus 4x2 is constant along that line. Okay, so for example, I'd hold this line here. This is, let's say, 5x1 plus 4x2 equals 10. So what would I do? I'd say, this is the line 5x1 plus 4x2 equals 10, and, and it intersects with my feasible region. Okay, so that means that there exist feasible points in this region with an objective value of 10. 
is that are those the optimal points? No, they are not because I'm trying to maximize 5x1 plus 4x2. So that means I want my objective value to get bigger. So if I go to the right like this, this would now be the line 5x1 plus 4x2, 5x1 plus 4x2 is equal to 15, like that. And that's still better. So what should I really be doing here? I'm going to take this family of lines that are perpendicular to this arrow. And each of those family of lines is going to represent, as I said, um, you know, the, the line where the objective function is constant. And I am interested in finding the point in this feasible region where that objective value is as high as possible. And so we've seen that as I move this, uh, as I move this line to the right, um, it turns out to be the case that uh, the objective value is increasing. This is objective values 5, 10, 15, and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this line and I'm going to move it as far as I can to the right so that the line still intersects my feasible region, which is to say so that there are still feasible points that have that objective value. And so as I do that, I'd say, okay, I'm going to keep moving, and then I'm going to stop as soon as this line ceases to intersect with this feasible region. And we can look at it with our eyeballs and see that it happens right there. It happens at this point. So I move along this direction as much as I can, and then I stop as soon as I can't move anymore. And we can see that that happens right at this corner here. And in fact, intuitively, you can probably convince yourself that the solution is always going to lie on a corner, or at least there will always exist a solution that lies on a corner, because you're moving that, uh, that line, that perpendicular line, you're moving it out until you basically stop intersecting with the feasible region. So that can't happen somewhere in the inside of the feasible region. It has to happen at least on the boundary somewhere, and, and in particular on a corner. This is an aside, but you could have it happen where the uh, objective um, or the, the line here intersects the boundary of the feasible region, but it might be perfectly aligned with one of the sides like that. Like suppose that instead of being perpendicular like this, suppose that instead my objective function vector was pointing a little bit more up that way, and maybe things would happen so that my objective value line was perfectly aligned with one of these sides here. If that were to happen, then in fact any point along that side would be an optimal solution. This is a total side note. You don't need to worry about that right now. So what have I concluded? I've now figured out that my optimal solution to this linear program is this point right here. So now how do we work out algebraically what that point is? Well, we can look at it. In this case, we can look at it with our eyeballs. And we can say, well, the x coordinate sure looks like 3. And the, and the, the y coordinate sure looks like uh, 3 halves. Um, but that's, you know, that's not good enough. Uh, you really need to verify that. So how do you do that? Well, that's where these Roman numerals come back in. Because what can I say? I can say this corner is defined as the place where this line here, the line with the Roman numeral 1, intersects with this line here with the Roman numeral 2. So therefore, what has to be true about this corner? It has to be the intersection of the lines here, which are the uh, which are obtained by setting these two constraints equal to each other. This is Roman numeral 1, this is Roman numeral 2. So what you do is just solve the system of equations. Uh, 6x1 plus 4x2 is equal to 24. And you'd solve x1 plus 2x2 is equal to 6. Uh, you know, you can solve that by hand, and you would find that the optimal solution, indeed, x1 star, x2 star, uh, is equal to 3 and uh, 1.5 or, or 3 halves. And that's it. We've just, uh, we've just solved our, uh, our linear program here by hand. And we can verify if we want that the objective value at the optimal solution, and that's going to be uh, 5 times x1, so 5 times 3 plus 4 times x2, 4 times 1.5, which is uh, 15 plus 6, which is... 21. So we've now fully solved this problem in two variables.